Good morning to each and every one of you. We greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We are about to begin our worship, virtual worship service. We ask that you join in with us, even this time, to glorify God through songs of praises. One of my very favorite is, is to say in song, thank you, Lord. Will you please join us even now?
12 months, one year anniversary, Lord God, some of us, even family members, ended up in the hospital. Some of our family members did not make it through. But Lord, we want to thank you. You kept us. You brought us through 12 months during this pandemic. Lord, we want to thank you. There are so many lives yet receiving vaccinations. Oh God, to detect this virus. And Lord, we want to thank you for the scientists. We want to thank you, God, for those, oh God, who risk their own lives on the line. Lord, we thank you. Realizing that we are yet not out of the woods. But Lord, we want to take this time out to say thank you. Thank you that knowing that the blood is yet running warm in our land. So now, oh God, as we come this morning, we come, Lord, with a praise in our heart, our thanksgiving in our own our lips. We realize that you've been so good. You've been so merciful. You've been so understanding. Lord, we want to thank you. We ask, Lord, now that you will bless those who have joined us in this virtual worship service. We pray, God, that now we may be a word from heaven on high that will lift us up, that we may be able to lift you up even higher. Bless us one and all. For these and all bless you, wise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Now at this time, Cheryl will share with us the liturgy reading from John chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. I will be reading our scripture today from the New International Version of the Bible. I will be reading John chapter 3, verses 14 through 21, and it reads, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. And the church say, Amen. There is a beautiful hymn found in the hymn, the hymn, the hymn number 215. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. The message unto you I'll give is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Look and live, my brother, as well as my sister. Look and live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word. Hallelujah. 
it is only that you look and live. God. 
For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, a very, very, I say unto you, except, my Bible says, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, or very, very, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. I want to focus our attention mainly on verse 1 where it says, and I'll hear it again, there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God. We're going to stop right there. The Lord's will, I ask that you pray with us and if you will pray for us. For I want to use for a subject today, sermon is entitled, A Night Visitor. A Night Visitor. My beloved, as I attempt to give you the subject for today's sermon, I am somewhat aware and are yet hesitant of using this for a subject, a night visitor, simply because the only thing that comes to the mind of Mrs. Tompkins, our first lady, named Ernestine, is that a night visitor can mean anything. Mainly, or most of all, a night visitor can be any small creature that crawls or roma at nighttime. Oh yes, it was this incident that happened some years ago. Either it was in a movie's or a conversation we had shared about snakes. Lo and behold, when night fell, Mrs. Tompkins went into a deep sleep, which resulted in having a terrible nightmare. Being awakened in order to awaken her, I barely escaped from having or from getting two black eyes. All right, all right. Now, Cheryl, <laughs> can you imagine? If I put it like this, can you imagine coming to church on Sunday morning with two black eyes? I would have had to do this now, as some of you may have. Do it. I, I may have to <laughs> come, Brother Homer, in a different way. Waking up in the morning with with two, not one, but two black eyes. She was doing all that kind of stuff. All right, now. All right, now. Mm. And it awakened me, and I had to awaken her. It's, it's just a dream. But that's why I say I have to be hesitant when I talk about a night visitor. Oh, yeah. But maybe, just maybe, you yourself have experience for yourself or perhaps being a night visitor. 
For example, you may have found yourself going to the Lord in prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes. Having got a witness. When things had become so complicated, questionable, difficult for you or anyone else to fully understand. When you sought the Lord for an answer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jesus became your problem solver. Have I got any witnesses yeah, yeah. in the house? No wonder this gospel singer by the name of Albertina Walker. Listen to what she says, Albertina. She said, makes no difference. What's the problem? I can go to God in prayer. Yes, I have this blessed assurance. I can go to God in prayer. He will take my gloom and sorrow, turn it into light. He will come for strength and keep me. I can go to God in prayer. When I need him, all I got to say is, Father, our Father, up in heaven, I can go to him. I can go to God in prayer. And so today I find it quite unique. I find it quite unique in our text today that this is exactly what Nicodemus did. Nicodemus happens to be a great ruler and a leader of the Pharisee. A visitor who came to Jesus by night. But wait for the rest of you. Before you beat up on Nick in short, in name short. Before we enter of us beat up on Nick, how many times you or I had to go at night to confess of our sins down on our knees about something that just kept bothering you? Maybe an evil deed that, that you couldn't and wouldn't tell nobody else but the Lord. No one of the hymn writer said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. Oh, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God, God in prayer. Well, the reason why Nicodemus came to Jesus by night was simply, simply this. He came because of his curiosity about Jesus or who, or who Jesus was. Hey, don't, don't we all sometimes or the other we get a little curious about others sometimes don't we all try to figure out who is this person and who is that person? We get curious along the way, not only about people, but even about things in life. Out of curiosity, we don't mind asking or we don't mind even finding out. Out of Yes, out of curiosity led Nicodemus to ask Jesus the question. Listen, if you will. Nicodemus began to say, Rabbi, or perhaps teacher, we know that you come from God, for no one could perform these signs or perhaps these miracles except God were with him. 
Oh yes, it appeared that Naomi and Nicodemus wanted to know, but all the Pharisees, the only difference was that the rest was just too afraid to ask. Yes, all they, they all had heard and they all had seen Jesus perform many miracles right before their eyes. I do not know, but I, I do believe in my heart that in the back of their mind, they had to think that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the Most High God. Look how Jesus respond. Jesus responded by telling Nicodemus that he must be born again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a song I used to hear in the old church something like the same way of saying you must be born again. So when Jesus tell Nicodemus, you must be born again. This is what was even more complicated to the ears of Nicodemus of being born again. That led to the second question being asked by Nicodemus. That is right there. Nicodemus asked the second question, Rabbi, how can a man be born? Can, how can a man be old and enter into his mother's womb for a second time? How can he be born again? You see, my sister and my brother, Nicodemus, could only visualize the physical birth as we all, as human, uh, was birthed into this world. But uh, lo and behold, Nicodemus did not know of anything about the spiritual birth. And that's what is it is all about the spiritual birth that Jesus was trying to get Nicodemus to see, for Nicodemus to understand. But here, Nicodemus still puzzled. Therefore, he wondered how could this possibly be? Oh, don't you see, my sister and my brother, there are many things that happens in our world that humankind has nothing to do with it. But somewhere I read in the Bible where it seems to be impossible with God, all things are possible. God would not have us to maybe just consider the physical aspect of things, but more so the spiritual aspect of things. Do I have a witness? Jesus, Nicodemus, thought more in mind, how could this be possible? I am sure that Jesus was somewhat astonished of Nicodemus, who is supposed to be a, a great scholar of the Bible, a great scholar of God's word, a ruler, a teacher himself. No doubt about it, taught Bible study, taught Sunday school, but here Jesus being astonished. Amen. That Nicodemus did not know anything about the spiritual birth, the second birth, 
And like so many of us, we have heard of many of times about a second chance, a second or another opportunity. But how often do we hear of someone having a second birth, born spiritually in Christ Jesus? Here Jesus, verse 10, answered Nicodemus by saying to him, Nicodemus, are thou not a master of Israel and knowest not these things when you and I have been born again? Jesus expect us to know all these things that we can tell others about the spiritual things of God. Do I have a witness? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. My sister, my brother, in the wondering mind of Nicodemus as he visited Jesus by night, Jesus did not criticize him even more in his knowledge of supposing to know of these things. But here Jesus responded the second time by saying Nicodemus assuredly or oh, verily, verily I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. For that is that which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So therefore, marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Yes, yes, Lord. So my brother and my sister, I am sure that Nicodemus, being a night visitor, left with a with clarity, with a better understanding yes, yes. about the second birth or the new birth. Nicodemus Jesus had taught him well as if he was in Bible study or perhaps in his Sunday school class. I don't know of any greater teacher than the master teacher who happened to be Jesus himself. And I want to say in my conclusion today, Again, as Nicodemus being a night visitor, there are three things quickly that I would like to point out that I observe in our text today about being a night visitor. Number one, it was unexpectedly unexpected land of Nicodemus showing up at night. You see, my sister and my brother, it was even a risk-taking thing for Nicodemus. Think about it. It's a strong possibility that it would have ruined his reputation or who he was. So unexpected, Nicodemus showing up at night when the sun had gone down. But I want to let you in on something today. And that is, it doesn't matter 
what time of day or what time of night if you want to see Christ Jesus you can come at any time of the day you may have to come like the woman Jesus met at the well from being a badish it doesn't matter what Jesus just come just as you are even if you have to consider yourself as a night visitor secondly unexpectedly a never demon of not knowing anything about the second birth. Yes, you can have, any of us can have all of the knowledge. And it's good to have knowledge. Yes, it's good to have knowledge. But my Bible reminds us that of all get an understanding, am I right? about it. Thirdly, unexpectedly, a nigger demon, one who had to be again a Pharisee and a great leader in the community. Unexpectedly, nigger demon becomes a disciple of Jesus in private. Amen. What a risk that Nicodemus took. My Lord, not knowing that just a few weeks later it would be another secret private follower of Jesus. Just a few more weeks later it would be Nicodemus. It would be Joseph of Upper Maria to take Jesus' body down from the cross. Oh, what a risk it would have been even with Nicodemus' status for us to know today. And I want to say even more so in my closing, yes, I fully admire Nicodemus, but Nicodemus did not allow pride to stop him from coming to Jesus by night, although he could not expose himself when he found himself in meetings with his fellow workers, fellow Pharisee, nigger demon, he allowed himself to swallow pride. And that's what we have to do sometimes. Sometimes not only we have to swallow pride but sometimes uh, if we want to see Jesus we have to come down over our high horses that the Lord can speak to us right where we are to get an understanding what it means to be born again. I'm so glad. I say I'm glad. Nicodemus, he left with his head up high, down in his heart, deep down in his soul. Nicodemus began to believe. What it means when Jesus, when John himself, I'm talking about John, the divine John, included in his 
same chapter of our being lifted up when the children of Israel was out in the wilderness. My Lord, because of that rebellious ways, because of that complaint, because of that grumbling mumbling, God sent some servants, some servants, in other words, some snakes, that was poison snakes, that bit the Israelites, and from that same bite, many died right where they were. But God is God all right. God spoke to Moses, told Moses, Moses, what I want you to do, and get a bronze servant, place it on a pole. And when you place it on a pole, lift it up high as high as you can get it. And when the children of Israel look up to the servant on the pole, they will be my Lord, no doubt about it, Nicodemus had read over the same strip over and over again. My Lord, but the Bible said that when the Israelites put their eyes look to the servant that Moses had lifted up. That Jesus was talking about uh, that I must do, uh, I must be uh, lifted up uh, as Moses uh, lifted up the servant. Uh, and what I like about it, uh, that lifting up uh, on the servant uh, and Moses lift up uh, on the pole uh, was only uh, good enough. Uh, don't hear me uh, was only good enough uh, to be physically healed. Uh, but when I look again, uh, I'm talking about uh, that spiritual healing. Uh, when uh, I said, when uh, they nailed Jesus, uh, put him on, put him on uh, the old red cross, uh, on Carol's cross, uh, he was lifted up. Uh, healing. It was all spiritual healing. It was for salvation. It's a God all right. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I've been born again. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Glory to God. There may be someone here today who have a thought or perhaps a question in that mind. No matter where you may be at this time, you may not even be fully dressed. Don't worry about it. If you just want a, an answer, if you just want a solution, I come by, I stop by, just to let you know that Jesus is the answer. You don't have to be so educated in no way. It's good to have education, but if you can just come just as you are, I declare you can receive eternal life because in that same chapter, John 3.16, it says that for God so loved that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This family 
hear him that says, just as I am without one but thy thou blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Bless each and every family, oh God. 
You know what we stand in need of even before we ask. Oh God, we continue to look to you, Lord. Continue to look to the hills from which cometh our help. For our help come from the Lord. Now in the grace of God and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest now and abide with us his and forevermore. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen.